YouTube Oz, it going the Goat House is back with the Jacksonville Jaguars video. We're going over a preview, what to watch, players to watch, games to watch, and much more here. Doing this for every NFL team. We have a playlist on the channel for the teams that we have done so far. Check it out. Comment which team I should do next. So for the Jags, I think the big question for people is, do they kind of continue where they left off, which was bad, or do they kind of get back on track from the end of the previous season or in the middle of the season last year, some big questions. I'm going to talk about some things here that I think people aren't talking about enough. So some maybe surprising things to ex expect from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, but number three, I think a lot of you are kind of curious about this as well. The receiver snaps and alignment, uh, you know, big question. But what's not a question is Christian Kirk is their best receiver. Number one receiver. I actually think he's quite underrated, and I think we realize that, you know, including myself, at the end of last year where he was out of some games because uh, he was injured and the Jags desperately, desperately missed him. It kind of had me going, is this their most important player? It's kind of crazy to think what is good of, is good of a quarterback Trevor Lawrence can be, uh, but Kirk is just extremely important to them. I think a very underrated, underrated receiver, uh, a big-time player for them, and he's involved in so many different ways. He you know, plays in the slot a lot, but... Give him the ball underneath, you know, behind the line of scrimmage, just beyond it, and then downfield as well. Definitely a downfield threat, a threat after the catch. So more important than you think, a better player than you think. Remember, people were ripping the Jags for that contract they they gave him, but well worth it there. Hopefully he's healthy. Um, they they missed him, and even, you know, him being beat up at the end of last year. So it's kind of maybe going to help them just by default, you know, if he's healthy, good to go, which he will be going into this year. And the big question then Receiver two, Gabe Davis versus Brian Thomas Jr. How do they use these guys together? How do they divide up the snaps? Do they start three receivers at once? Uh, they added Duvernay. They have Parker Washington, who kind of came alive a little bit when Kirk was out last year. I liked him a lot at Penn State, so maybe he's got some upside. So how does this rotation work? Do they divide up the snaps outside of Kirk pretty evenly? Does Gabe Davis stay healthy? But Davis and Brian Thomas Jr. kind of viewed, both viewed as kind of X receivers. What are their strengths? They're really good down the sideline, uh, deep contested catches. Uh, so can they work together uh, on the field at the same time? Uh, but I think they mesh well with Christian Kirk. I mean, you got these two big body contested catch targets, and then you have Kirk out there who's a lot different, but a lot of deep threat there. Make They're going to make defenses, you know, fear that, you know, and he really stretches out the defenses vertically, so that's good. Uh, but Brian Thomas Jr., obviously a lot of upside. Obviously should already be a good player, but, yeah, kind of was – limited to the sideline for the most part, downfield, red zone, which will help the Jags. But can he add more to the route tree? Are they patient with him because of that? Because they want him to add a little bit more. Uh, so just very curious about the snaps. you know. And they, they wanted neighbors. They want to trade up for him. They actually, actually traded back for Brian Thomas Jr. So even though it was a guy they really liked, they really think highly of, it wasn't like a must, like we must have this guy because they traded back a little bit. Um, you know, So I could see them being a little patient. You know, He's not going to... Maybe some people expecting like a top tier amount, like Christian Kirk amount of snaps, you know, along with him. I wouldn't, you know, it could happen, but you yeah, don't be surprised if they're a little patient. That doesn't mean he's not going to play like right away or anything like that. But uh, yeah, just very curious how they divide up all these snaps and the different alignments because it feels like they have two X receivers that could be really solid in Davis and Brian Thomas Jr. I think Thomas Jr. has. He can be, you know, he can actually be a Z receiver if you need him to in the future because of his athletic ability. I think it's more just kind of getting him the reps, uh, getting him more involved because he kind of just got going for LSU. They had neighbors kind of doing everything else where he was kind of the boundary guy. So I think talented enough, athletic enough, just to, it's just a matter of kind of getting him more reps. So very curious how they used all these guys, but I do know Christian Kirk. Uh, being healthy and being that number one guy is huge for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, number two, yeah, something that people don't realize, is a couple things here. Well, first, uh, the defense is going to improve more than you think. And I think people will go, well, they just they, they didn't add a whole lot on D. I mean, they added players, obviously, throughout the offseason, the entire offseason. But, but outside of Armstead, it's nothing like massive to most people. I know Darby's kind of a bigger name, but uh, Savage. But it's like, do they really improve that much? But what I think people fail to look at is coaching. And I, I think people failed to realize during the, when in their struggle, their struggles at the end of last year, 
Um, I think what, when you talk about the Jag struggles at the end of last year, people want to say, you know, point at Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence, maybe the receivers dropping the ball a little bit. And yeah, that needed to be a little, all that needed to be better. But what people for some reason don't talk about is the defense down the stretch when they were really struggling. And the defense was, yeah, was a big part of that. But I think specifically, and I was talking about it on Twitter at the time of these games, play calling was awful. I, I thought it was really bad, like mind-blowing, surprising how bad it was. Uh, I thought the coaching, you know, Mike Caldwell, a little surprising. They kind of put in the players in wrong position. He was randomly calling cover zeros in, in pretty brutal times. We were talking about it a lot, like – in the moment, um, just putting the players in situations to fail, I, I really think so. So down the stretch, they were some of the worst. It was probably one of the worst coach defenses in football down the stretch. So they fire him. They had Ryan Nielsen, who was with Atlanta uh, before that with New Orleans. He did a phenomenal job with the Falcons last year. Phenomenal job. So that was a big-time hire. Probably one that's not being talked about enough. That was probably one of the better like assistant coach hires of all, all, the entire offseason. Uh, so I think he's a good defensive mind. I think he gets more out of players. I like his scheme as well. They're going to mix it up. Uh, and it's and He kind of brought his learning experience from the Saints, but added a little bit more of his own philosophy in there as well because the Saints run an insane amount of man coverage. So he has that with him, but he's mixed in a bit more zone, which is good because the best defenses will be the defenses that mix it up and mix it up properly and can run different things. Uh, you know, it could be versatile in their coverages. So that's huge. Uh, I think he's going to get more out of these players. Some of these players are like kind of about to catch their stride. We'll talk about some of those guys, some of these younger players, and you already have great players like Josh Allen. Uh, I think Darnell Savage is a pretty good addition for them. Like I, I think uh, he could be a key for Ryan Nielsen's defense. He can play in a slot. He could play free safety. He could be a playmaker. Uh, he was a very raw prospect coming out of Maryland as well. So I think he's going to fit that defense pretty well. Some be kind of under the radar signing, someone under the radar signing that could be good. Linebacker should be solid. The pass rusher, all of it should be pretty solid. But he's a much, it is a major, major improvement in terms of just defensive coaching in general across the board when everything you know everything you factor into that development uh you know his scheme the play calling every all of it so don't just look at what they've added i think if, if most people if they look at what they added it's pretty much they're going to go armstead and there's some other pieces I, i'd say it's ryan nielsen his scheme is play calling armstead and then some other pieces that actually could be better than you think so um, and that's the big, like I already said, like the something, something that people do not talk about during their struggles is the defense was a big part of it actually. Uh, and, and the play calling last year. So I think that is something that kind of got solved. So that is kind of a step into kind of this next part here. Number one, I'd watch for them to get, con get back on track here. I think too many people, and I could be wrong, but too many people, they, they just kind of go off what happened most recently, and that always happens with players, with teams, and they go, well, they ended very bad, you know, very poorly, so that's them. That's the Jaguars, and that's just not how things work, really. Like, why can't they get back? Just before that stretch of bad, they were really, really solid. They looked like one of the better AFC teams there there, there was, so uh, pretty decent on both sides of the ball. The offense started clicking at the end of the year before. They looked like they're you know they were going to really get going in the future so what there was there's more of a sample size of that than the bad so why not that and you could say to me well why not the bad but again we talked about the defense i thought that that was that was i talked about it a million times i thought that was a big problem during the struggles um couldn't get off the field when they should have i thought the play calling was big so i thought in a bad way it was big so but big of what they've added so i think that helps them offensively yeah, they got to catch the ball a bit better for Trevor Lawrence. Uh, you know, with uh, all the receivers, they even as good as Kirk is of some drops, as good as Calvin Ridley was. You know, obviously he's not in there anymore. He had some drops. Um, Evan Engram had a, had a ton of drops. So even he's, he's super good, but he's got he's had a lot of drops. So they they got to fix that. And a lot of pointing the finger at Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, he has to be better. There was times I don't get on him as much as other people. Uh, there's people that like, oh, Trevor Lawrence like, was awful. Like he's a bust. Like you're getting a little too far here. Um, so, but there, there, yeah, he's got to be a lot better. There were times at the end of the year when I'm like, Trevor, like, what is like, I'm surprised. Like, what is he doing there? Like a lot of situations like that. Um, but I do think some people get a little too far with the blaming of him. Um, there was a lot of, for a lack of better words or a better term, like bear misses, for that team, like an insane amount where it's like if the ball, like sometimes Trevor Lawrence, like if the ball was like half a yard 
shorter on some of those deep balls or or if the receiver stuck his arms out a little bit more if the receiver's got a little bit more than the fingertips on it like there was so many of those plays like they were about to be big game changing scoring plays that they could have won the it happened almost every single week um you know pretty much every single week so like they had so many of those like I don't, you know, lack of better words, like bear, bear misses, like so close to not only making big plays, but winning multiple games because of those plays. So to me like that, I think the luck will change. Maybe it's not all lucky or being unlucky. You got to execute, right? So we're not going to give a pass to all these players, like including Trevor Lawrence, but they were so close to being a great team all year. I thought like if people don't realize they're like, they're that close so close yet so far type situation, I suppose. But I don't think that's going to continue to go that way. And they're going to hit some of these plays. I'm like Trevor Lawrence had some, he had some really good throws in the end zone, even that were like just outside the end zone, but could have been a play made by the receivers. Um, like so many, I don't know if I've seen I, that might've been the most. And I don't know if we can keep track of that, but as a team ever had more of those, like, bear misses that are huge plays that were like in a way they were kind of good play, like good throws like i i never seen so many of them in a season so from a, a single team that I, from my time watching i don't know there's probably more teams out there you probably it's probably something people forget but uh, so they're like that close to being that much better is my point um i, I you know trevor lawrence has the upside in him there's a reason to give him that contract yeah it was a little much because he has to go out and prove it but you see the flashes. You know he has that potential in him. Uh, they have weapons. The offensive line should continue to get better. I, you know, I like the way Anton Harrison played last year. He's only going to get better. Uh, they added Ezra Cleveland. You know, halfway through the season, it seems like a good scheme fit. Um, he was supposed to be a tackle coming coming out, so he's a guard and he's still finding his way. So he's got upside. Uh, you know, so they add Mitch Morse at center. That was huge for them too. Uh, ETN's fine. No worries about the running back position. They have, you know, we said they had weapons. The defense should get better. So I don't see any. Doug Peterson to me is a good coach. People get on them about the play calling last year. I don't have. I didn't really have much of a problem with the offensive play calling defense. I had a major problem, uh, but they fixed that. So I I don't see any reason why this team can't get back on track. I guess the reason would be uh, for every team injuries. Uh, you know, but other than that, other than that, tough division. It's a tough division because. The te- we know how good the Texans are. The Colts play teams tough every week. They're a young team, and depending on Richardson, they can get better. I, th- I think people are sleeping on the Titans a little bit, and they can be sneaky, uh, explosive, both sides of the ball. And the Jags always seem to have a problem with them as well. So that that division maybe could just splitting, or you know, you got to take care of business with those teams, so that can hold them. I'd say... Yeah, what happens if Gabe Davis gets injured, and Brian Thomas kind of looks a little raw? He's kind of like a little one dimensional, I, I guess, for, you know, in his type of game that could happen as a rookie, um, you know, so then, uh, you know, somebody else has to step up. That could be an issue. Offensive line health. I guess you could talk about cornerback health is a big one. Cornerback health. I'm not worried about the defensive front. I know people knock their pass rush getting after quarterback uh, outside of Josh Allen. I think they're going to be fine. Um, linebackers. I like the linebacker group. I think Nielsen will get the most out of these safeties, even though they're aren't. I like Cisco. I think Savage are going to move around a bit. Cornerback health. Tyson Campbell could be really good. Has dealt with some injuries here and there. Ronald Darby feels like he gets injured almost every year, but he's a really good corner. Somebody else going to have to step up as well. Um, they added a solid slot guy in Jerry and Jones. Um, you know, so that is actually a big thing. But for everything I explained, I don't see a reason why they can't get back on track. Um, they should be able to do it. So don't base everything off the, is that's my advice. Don't base everything off of the end of last year for the Jags. On to the players to watch Devin Lloyd, uh, you know, young linebacker from Utah. I was extremely high on Devin Lloyd and I still am. He's been maybe a little bit underwhelming. I thought he'd give a little bit more, but he's been solid, you know, and he's still very, very young. Um, and it was, yeah, some people may have considered him a little raw, I suppose, but you know, now is the time for him to get going. I expect him to. I think he'll fit this Ryan Nielsen defense pretty damn good. I'd like them to blitz him a little bit more. Uh, Caldwell was blitzing the safeties a little more last year. A lot of cover zero blitzing those guys. Corners had no help over the top. It was, it was brutal. I like a good cover zero uh, here and there. Not when they were calling it and not with their 
situation. I think you need to have, you need to have like really good corners. Now Campbell could be that guy, but uh, he showed flashes I thought two years ago. But Devin Lloyd, I think he's about to break out even more. I think he's gonna be really solid in this scheme, and he's gonna be that guy. Uh, I'm gonna predict he's gonna be that guy that I thought he was going to be. I was very high out of on him out of Utah. Uh, number two, another young player that we're waiting to break out, Trayvon Walker, and I. And like Lloyd, Lloyd's been good. I say he's been a little underwhelming because I expected him to be a little more pro Ray, a little bit more. And not that he hasn't been, but just a little bit more from him. Trayvon Walker, I was very high on. I think everybody was. The Jags, the Jags were. Um, and people say he's been underwhelming. I would actually disagree with that, though. He was an extremely, extremely raw prospect. Um, like he had flashes. Uh, at Georgia, they moved him around a bit. His flashes were just using his length and, and shedding blocks. And you kind of had to work with him. Uh, specifically off the edge with pass rush moves and closing, getting in uh, and finishing plays on the quarterback. So very raw in that category, just an athletic, strong, lengthy freak. So it kind of makes sense where he's at right now to me. But now is a time where we do we want to see improvement. We want to see more steps up. I think we'll get that in this new scheme. Um, some more help with Armstead out there. And Josh Allen, it feels like only getting better. So big breakout season for the former number one overall pick there. And the number one's going to be very obvious. It's going to be Trevor Lawrence. I mean, it has to be. Uh, not just because he just got that contract, but that's big. He got that contract because the Jags know what he's made of. They know what he has inside of him. I know. I know the same thing. I know he has it in him. But he's got to go show it now. And I, like I talked about, I think people get on him a little bit too much. Uh, but he does have to be better. He has to be a little more consistent for sure. But... This is a big year. Got to step up. This has got to be his team. It can't be, you know, like I said, almost felt like Christian Kirk was the most important player. I thought last year he was. I, I, I say it, and, and it was more evident down the stretch. Trevor Lawrence has to be the most important player on this team. He has to be the best player on this team. Go and do it. I think he can do that. I think he could. Um, well, we will see. Games to watch. Obviously, those division games are going to be big. You know, they struggle with the Titans. I think they're a little underrated. Uh, the Colts are always tough. The Texans are going to be a really good team. Those are big. I look at the all away games. I look at the Bills in week three. Uh, the early season, I think it was week five last year, they played the Bills very well. That's kind of when the Jacks turned around. It's like, all right, they got good around that point. Um, so how do we compare? You know, it's going to be like almost about a year later. Uh, how, how do we play against the Bills this year? You know, Gabe Davis revenge game. Uh, they, they should be able to match up with the Bills, but they can't be underwhelming like they were at the end of last year. So kind of a good, for us, good learning experience. Where are they at? Where are the Bills at? Going to be a big game. At, at the Eagles, another really solid team. Uh, you know, so these, these both teams should be really solid. Should be a really good game midseason week nine. See what these teams are made of. Doug Peterson revenge game. That's huge. He's kind of he kind of knows what the Eagles are about. They know what he's about. His, his offense is about. That's big. But the biggest part of why this is my favorite game on here is, yeah, the Jags were known as like an up and coming good team. People were hyped on them. Look at mid season last year. They get even more hyped about them. They're like, okay, this is one of the better teams in the AFC. And then they blow it at the end of the year. And everyone think most of the people think they stink because what happened at the year end of the year. Eagles were known as his favorite juggernaut NFC team. They were awful at the end of the year in the playoff game. People were like, you know, is that going to happen again? Or you know, they kind of going basing off the end of the year. So there's two teams that kind of had a similar path and how they ended things and what people think of them. So I love that how they are these teams mid season um, when they typically play good ball here. And then at Lions at Week 11, I think it's a good game. The Jags typically defensively, if they have a strength, it's more so they stop the the run pretty well. They were a little underwhelming at that last year, but they're usually pretty decent. Stopping a run, and I, th I think they should be fairly solid. The Lions, that's kind of how they open things up. So will that work in the Jags' favor, or the Lions just got too much there? Uh, also, this is a week before the bye week, and it's a big, it's a big tough game. So if you can kind of play well within this game going into the bye week and kind of going in that stretch where they struggled last year, which I think it's a pretty decent schedule down the stretch this year. So this will kind of have a lot. Like if they win this game, I'm feeling pretty good about them. And I know the bye is going to come up, and everyone in the back of their mind is going to be like, Ah, do they go downhill here? But I would feel pretty good about them with that one. So three away games against really good teams that should be interesting um, to watch and could say a lot about the Jacksonville Jaguars this year. Uh, fans takes quite a few of them. Some of our ex-subscribers, like always, answer not play, calling on both sides of the ball. Must get better than new coordinators. Yeah, we, we, we talked about it. I'm not, I'm not too worried about offensive play calling. I, I'm really not. I know some people are. Defensively, um, 
I, you see, I'm, I maybe I'm a little optimistic. I think it's kind of solved. I think it was awful last year, and I, I, Ryan Nielsen only had one stint as a as a play caller on defense, and with the Falcons, I did a good job. I thought he did a good job, but that's not going to decide everything for this year. But I, I'm very confident with it being much better. It, it actually doesn't have to be great this year for it to be much better. So um, Lawrence has been paid. Time to assert himself as a consistent elite quarterback. And we talked about it's it's time. It's time right now. Uh, I've been defending Trevor Lawrence. It's time. Come on. Uh, receiver play, how do they utilize uh, Brian Thomas Jr. and Gabe Davis? Yeah, how do they use both those guys? Or they, do they view them as similar players right now and they want to make Brian Thomas Jr. more of a Z rather than an X so they both can pair together? Well, will they be patient with him? We talked about that. It's a very interesting question. Um, yeah, some new faces on defense. Kind of touched on that D-line rotation. Yeah, that's something else. Like do Because Armstead, Armstead's been a pretty versatile defensive lineman like he's played over the tackle he's played three technique and walker at georgia kind of was you know you know he would stand up he would drop in coverage he'd play dn he'd slide inside so do they get creative with that obviously we know josh allen's gonna play off the edge but you know do they do they kind of get creative there does mason smith i like a lot but he's more of an upside guy um does he get in right away you know so some questions there o-line health uh, yeah, I got to be a little healthy. There's been a tackle issue in terms of health, but now that Anton Harrison's kind of getting going, you do have three guys in there so uh, for the tackle position, so hopefully that helps them. Um, Cam Sullivan, Armstead Health, and pairing yeah, his health as well, and then pairing with Alan Walker. Yeah, how do they use those guys together? It's going to be a lot of fun. Receiver usage, yep. There it is good. Uh, do, you know, do they feel like – yeah, because they tried to get a lot better at receiver. They you know did they, they kind of sniffed around. on They wanted Ridley back. They made him a pretty good offer. The Titans just made a bigger offer. Um, yeah, that's a big question too, going up against Ridley. Ridley torched the Titans last year. He's on the Titans playing the Jags twice a year. It's actually a crazy talking point as well, a big thing there. Um, you know, so are they confident with the receivers if they if they try to add one and kind of – yeah, they tried to get Ridley. They sniffed around some of the other big guys, and they tried to trade up for neighbors. So – uh, how do they feel about that group uh, outside of Kirk in terms of consistency? Uh, new offense line, receivers, uh, and big money. Yeah, Lawrence has to make a step up. Uh, and then a take, despite a solid season, losses to other playoff teams keep the Jags out. A lot of tough teams in the AFC. So, yeah, I kind of ran through that scenario. I- I'm being optimistic. I'm being confident they kind of get back on track. But look how many good AFC teams there are Uh I think the focus got to go out there and win the division. I mean, obviously, you got to go win the division. If they win the division, they're in the playoffs. It's common sense shit here. But uh, then you don't have to really worry about it. But the Texans win that division. You're fighting for a wild card spot where where you got the AFC North teams are fighting for wild card spots. Whoever doesn't win that division, a couple, all those teams can make the play, or playoff caliber. Um, you know, and then do the Chargers get back on track? And then the AFC East. Uh, you know, the Bills, Dolphins, Jets, if they're healthy. So there's a lot of good AFC teams. Um, so I could see that prediction. Uh, and Cardiac Cats had a whole breakdown here, um, you know, with the graphic and everything. Uh, clear improvements, the team and the staff. Yeah, I think mainly defense. Um, I have to look a little closer here. It's hard to read for me. It's a little far. Uh, yeah, tough but correct moves. Uh, questions were mostly answered problem with uh solving money kind of pushing things down the road yeah like so where are they at are they trying to win is it all all in now um yeah so some good good takes there um you know a lot a lot of you know things that we're kind of questioning or wondering about um there's a lot of takes from Jags fans here. Uh, some of the same things. I saw somebody, Dylan mentioned Devin Lloyd, you know, kind of being more in the appropriate spot, fit, fit in this scheme a little bit more like we talked about. Could he break out even further? Um, Gabe Davis, more consistent as a third or fourth option. So is he not used as like that option too? Um, and a, line, a lot of Ryan Nielsen talk here. Like Jags fans hyped about that. I'm super hyped about that. When they hired him, I was like, that's a bigger – he's not, not a big name, but that's a bigger hire than you think. It really improves this uh, this defense. Um, uh, do we have any uh, – yeah, corner still a big need by Toby. Yeah, I think if they stay healthy, I think it's fine. But it's kind of a uh, – Antonio Johnson, that's a big guy that could step up as well. They have a lot of guys like that, though. He was more of a slot, like a safety, but a lot, played in the nickel a lot. Um, you know, but they add Savage, who's like a like a Jimmy Ward type player, where he's a free safety and he's a slot. They have Cisco, that's pretty good. You know, safety. I, you know, I think they'll see maybe a lot of split safety with them, like both in the back end. Um, 
And then they drafted Jerry Jones as a slot corner. So that's actually – Antonio Johnson, I think, could be really good. Has a lot of upside. Um, does he start at like a strong safety role? At A&M, he played a lot in the slot, actually. But his reps at strong were really good. I remember talking about that. Like, people don't – because people see safety and they just think he, play, he played safety. But – um, he played more of his reps in the slot, but I thought his reps at strong safety uh, looked pretty good. So do they kind of go full-time there? Do they see that upside? So that's a good question as well. Uh, Tyson has some takes. Trevor receives an M- sees MVP votes. Uh, AFC South coming back to Duval. They definitely can win it. I could see it. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm excited about Nielsen's uh, defense as well. And Doug Peterson be a full-time play caller. Maybe he kind of like, now it's time to go. No more disappointment. Let's go. Uh, and um, in a take from a Cowboys fan, Marshawn Nealon fan, uh, I think the Jags are a sneaky contender. So, yeah, he's kind of, um, yeah, has some takes in there. Kirk, yeah, big Kirk guy. Defense takes a step up. So a lot of similar takes that I had there. Uh, and he says, I don't understand why people think they are, they'll be bad. Yeah, I, that's kind of my point throughout this video, too. I think people are just like, oh, they ended so bad. They lost the Titans when they were awful in a must-win game when they were beat up as well. Like, it's a bad team. And I, I understand it was extremely, extremely disappointing. Like, you just can't lose those games. You got to execute better. But I, I think people are a little too low. on. I think they're basing it on a, just, just the negatives. Look for the positives as well. And I guess you can't say that about every team. Uh, but I, I think the Jags could be solid. Um it's hard to call them sneaky. I, I don't really view them as sneaky because I think they're just a good team. People should expect them to be good. And if they're not, they don't miss a play. If they miss the playoffs, it's possible because how good the AFC is. Like they could be a good. There's some. There's going to be good AFC teams that miss the playoffs. Really, there is. But if they're one of those teams, it's still extremely underwhelming, extremely disappointing. And then they got to look at the staff and they got to look at the the players and um, re- really sit down and figure out what to do here because. Uh, because they should, they should be a good team. But I think they can be that team. I think they can get back on track here. So uh, that'll do it for this one. Let me know your takes in the comments. Uh, comment also which uh, team I should do next. Uh, video should be on Thursday. We have a playlist of these videos on the channel. Still got to get to some. We're really active um, on our Twitter and X as well. Links in the comments for that. Liquid IV is our sponsor. Code GOAT for, a, for 20% off. Check it out. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.